One of the significant qualities that make classic sitcoms such a great escape is the way every character seems to get along so well. They may fight, but they always make up by the end of the episode. These plot lines often hide behind-the-scenes feuds and tension between the cast. Keep watching as Facts First presents classic sitcom stars who didn't get along with the rest of their cast. Carol O'Connor Norman Lear was overjoyed when he finally found the right actor to play Archie Bunker in All in the Family. O'Connor's attitude made him perfect for the character, having just the right amount of crotchety, stubborn energy. The only problem was the fact that it also made him difficult to work with. The actor insisted on complete control of what Archie did and said. Within two days of being hired, he rewrote the entire pilot episode. He wrote it all in pencil and recorded himself reading all the parts. He spoke frankly about the decision in a 1999 interview with the Television Academy Foundation. He thought the original script was terrible and that if they didn't like his changes, they could get someone else to play the lead. They gave in to his demands to keep him, and it wasn't the last time he became angry or demanding. Norman admits he had plenty of difficult moments with the actor, but had nothing but respect for him. He visited Carol's widow, Nancy, after his untimely death in 2001. A birthday letter he'd written expressing his gratitude and respect was still on the actor's desk where he left it, and it brought the sentimental show creator to tears. Tina Louise Gilligan's Island premiered in 1964. It lasted only three seasons, but became a major hit during its run and in syndication. It had a talented ensemble cast that included Bob Denver, Jim Backus, Don Wells, Alan Hale Jr., Natalie Schaefer, and Russell Johnson. Tina Louise played the glamorous Ginger Grant, but there were rumors of ugly tension behind the scenes. The actress disliked the slapstick nature of the show and wanted to be the star. Don Wells, who played Marianne, says Tina even tried to change the famous theme song to have her character mentioned first. It begins with the skipper, his first mate, the millionaire, his wife, and the movie star. Everyone else was included in And the Rest. It was eventually changed, and show creator Sherwood Schwartz, actor Bob Denver, and director Han Rich all took credit for it. Tina also wasn't known for being social on set. She reportedly sat by herself and refused to mingle with the cast during rehearsals. Not all these reports have been confirmed, though. Don said of her that, quote, we're not enemies, but we're not close, and that she still has pleasant memories of her co-star. Tina did refuse to attend any of the Gilligan's Island reunions, but she also refused to bash the show in the press. She called it a great escape for viewers and said she was glad to be a part of it in an October 2019 interview with Closer Weekly. Francis Bavier Frances Bavier was only one example of an actress whose attitude didn't match her character behind the scenes. Aunt B. Taylor of The Andy Griffith Show was warm and caring, but her castmates said she could be cold and temperamental when the cameras stopped rolling. Ron Howard played Opie Taylor. He said that Frances often kept to herself. One of the show's directors, Ernest T. Bass, compared her to a landmine. He said she'd often get angry when given direction and would sometimes refuse to follow it. Andy Griffith didn't comment on how well and he and Francis got along. He did say in a 1998 interview with Larry King that she had apologized to him a few months before her death. Suzanne Summers Money is a common factor that causes feuds between sitcom casts. That was the case for John Ritter, Suzanne Summers, and Joyce DeWitt of Three's Company. Suzanne's contract expired by the end of the fifth season. She wanted to make the same amount as John, who was considered the star of the show, and made $100,000 more than her per episode. She made her complaints public and was taken off the show. Ratings plummeted after that. Three's Company was canceled in 1984, and a spin-off called The Ropers also failed. John was hurt by Suzanne's comments. It took nearly 20 years for them to become friends again. They patched it up before his death from an aortic dissection at age 54 in 2003. Maureen McCormick and Eve Plum Maureen and Eve played Jan and Marsha Brady on the classic sitcom The Brady Bunch. Their frequent sibling fights on the show hinted at a behind-the-scenes feud. Maureen and Eve allegedly never liked each other. They would both refuse to work on projects if they knew the other one was involved. The feud came to a head when Maureen hinted at a romantic relationship between the two actresses in her book, Here's the Story, Surviving Marsha Brady and Finding My True Voice. The blame kept shifting between both women. Eve denied there was a feud, though this may have been nothing more than an attempt to save face. Susan Olsen, who played Cindy, confirmed it in a 2015 interview. She called it petty and hated being in the middle of it. She said the two didn't get along, but had recently reconciled. The cast later came together for a 2019 HGTV special, A Very Brady Renovation. It saw everyone work to renovate the home used for the exterior of the classic Brady house to its original glory. 
It didn't suddenly make Eve best friends with her co-star, but she did say they'd grown up and could get along like real people. Before we tell you more, be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to Factsverse if you haven't already. Vivian Vance and William Frawley Ethel and Fred Mertz of I Love Lucy may seem like one of the most stable and loving couples in classic sitcoms. They were able to maintain that front for the cameras, but the relationship between the actors who played them was different. A single remark William overheard started a feud. Showrunner Jess Oppenheimer's son Greg talked about it in his book. Vivian said she was upset that viewers expected her as the loving wife of, quote, that old man. William was so hurt by her comments he asked for future episodes to include lines where Fred would insult Ethel. William Frawley already had a reputation for being difficult to work with. He was a known drinker. Desi and Lucy let him know he would be fired if he didn't show up for work for a legitimate reason too many times. Three strikes and you're out. He managed to follow the rule but still became difficult to work with, especially for Vivian. The behind-the-scenes tension also didn't keep I Love Lucy from being one of the most beloved classic sitcoms of all time. Barbara Eden and Larry Hagman I Dream of Jeannie was a long-running classic sitcom that lasted from 1965 to 1970. One of the key factors that kept viewers coming back was the romantic tension between Barbara Eden's Jeannie and Larry Hagman's Major Tony Nelson. What people didn't know was that there was a completely different type of tension behind the scenes. Larry was the son of Broadway star Mary Martin and always had dreams of stardom. He was an ambitious actor, but it often led to erratic behavior. Barbara said he was determined to control everything about the show. He also had an unpredictable temper and was drinking and taking drugs. He engaged in antics that included showing up to work in a gorilla suit and swearing while swinging an axe when visitors from the Flying Nun set came over. There was at least one thing Barbara and Larry agreed on. Neither of them wanted their characters to get married in the fifth season. They knew it would eventually cause the show to get canceled. It only lasted for 15 more episodes. Larry was so upset that he spent the last season hiding in his trailer and refusing to talk to anyone. Barbara felt like she'd lost a family when it ended, even a, quote, wild delinquent terror of a brother. She said she'd work with Larry again any time because of his talent and warm nature. Will Smith and Janet Hubert The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air was a six-season hit and introduced Will Smith to the world. One of the most notable changes during its run was the replacement of Janet Hubert, the original Aunt Viv, during seasons three and four. Will was a major part in convincing the showrunners to make this decision. The choice becomes understandable when you learn he never got along with Janet. He hasn't commented on the feud often, but says she always thought he was a snotty-nosed punk. She's been more vocal on the matter and has called him an egomaniac. Betty White and B. Arthur The late, great Betty White was one of the most beloved actresses in the world. But that doesn't mean everyone loved her. Her Golden Girls co-star B. Arthur reportedly never got along with her. She saw Betty as a pain in the neck. Their dispositions matched their characters, and their pessimistic and optimistic attitudes didn't mesh as well as they did in the sitcom. Now it's time to hear from you. Which one of these feuds was most surprising to hear about? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.